The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost, we follow the order of morning prayer. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship him. Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit with men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great assembly, I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn is number 531 in Lutheran service book, Hail, Thou Once Despised Jesus. Hail, Thou Once Despised Jesus, Hail, Thou Galilean King, Thou didst suffer to release us, Thou didst free salvation bring. Hail, Thou universal Savior, Bearer of our sin and shame. By Thy merit we find favor, Life is given through Thy name. Paschal Lamb by God appointed, all our sins on Thee were laid. By Almighty love anointed, Thou hast full atonement made. All Thy people are forgiven through the virtue of Thy blood. Opened is the gate of heaven, reconciled are we with God. Jesus, pale, enthroned in glory, there forever to abide. All the heavenly hosts adore thee, seated at thy Father's side. Therefore, sinners, thou art pleading, there thou dost our place prepare. 
ever for us interceding till in glory we appear. Worship, honor, power, and blessing thou art worthy to receive. Highest praises without ceasing, right it is for us to give. Help ye bright angelic spirits, all your noblest anthems raise. Help to sing our Savior's merits, help to chant Emmanuel's praise. The epistle reading appointed for this day is from the Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the appointed Old Testament reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15. O Yahweh, you know. Remember me and visit me and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Yahweh, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing? my wound incurable, refusing to be healed. Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore thus says Yahweh, If you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. 
For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares Yahweh. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is our text. Being a believer in the one true God can be hard. From the moment we are baptized, we have a cross-shaped target painted upon our heads and upon our hearts. And Satan is constantly shooting at it. It's hard to be a faithful, confessing Christian when that's happening, even for preachers who spend much of their time in God's Word. Persecution comes from many directions and in many ways. Sometimes we're attacked by the apathy of this world, ignored because the world doesn't care about what we have to say. It deems us irrelevant to today's world and today's conversations. When we do try to speak up according to our faith, we may get shouted down, canceled, deliberately pushed aside. We may find ourselves isolated from neighbors, friends, even from family. The world leaves us alone, and that can be very lonely. And at still other times, we may be confronted with open assaults, physical attacks that may threaten our livelihood, or even our lives. Yes, our lives as Christians in this world can be made miserable by any one of these forms of persecution. The prophet Jeremiah suffered them all. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. If any person in the Bible suffered from what we now call severe clinical depression, it was Jeremiah. The persecutions he suffered took their toll on him, physically and emotionally. They rattled his life and his faith down to his very core. Yes, even the great prophet Jeremiah had his questions, his doubts about God, as we sometimes do. And his questions were very much like yours and mine. Has God forgotten me? Is God letting me down? Should I just go, give in and go along with the world's alternatives? But, perhaps unlike us, Jeremiah openly brazenly, brings his complaints to God. Oh, Yahweh, you know. Remember me. But the way my life is going right now, it feels like you've forgotten me. Hey, Lord, here I am, and I need your help. So remember me and do something about it, okay? Visit me, be with me, and make your presence known. And take vengeance for me on my persecutors. I realize that I willingly gave up a lot to serve you, O oh God. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I didn't join in with their celebrations, because all the people there had turned away from you and your words. Instead, I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. I was offended at the way that they were celebrating their sin and their false gods. And for that... They persecuted me. They picked on me. They threatened me. They beat me up. I expected some of that, but why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? This suffering just doesn't seem to stop. It isn't getting any better, and there's no relief in sight. Has this all been some kind of cruel joke, God? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook? like waters that fail? Is your help and support like a river that looks like it'll provide plenty of water one day, but the next day is dry as dust? Where do we find answers to questions such as these? We could turn to the world, but remember that the world is already hostile toward God. The world will probably give us the same sort of answer that Job's wife gave to Job amid his troubles. Curse God and die. Job, of course, rejected that answer. He expressed his unwavering trust in God as he told his wife, you speak as the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? But where then do we turn in the midst of trouble? Well, where does Jeremiah turn in his miserable condition? Jeremiah turns back to the beginning. Back to his call into the ministry, he returns to God's words, God's promises. When Yahweh first called Jeremiah, he said, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares Yahweh. 
And he went on to say, but you, dress yourself for work. Arise and say to them everything that I command you. Do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you before them. And I, behold, I make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, declares Yahweh, to deliver you. And when the prophet Jeremiah heard those words, he rejoiced. And he said later in our text, Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Yahweh, God of hosts. You see, once God has made a promise, he will not break it. His words are rock solid perfectly reliable. In fact, once you find one of God's promises, you can hold him to it. As one of my dear professors used to say, the Lord loves to be caught in his own words. And how did the Lord respond to Jeremiah's complaints? With his promises. And as he hears those promises once again, Jeremiah is reassured that even amid all his doubts, God delivers. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, if you return, Jeremiah, I will restore you and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They, my rebellious people, shall turn to you, Jeremiah. They may try to win you over to their side, to subvert, subvert your faith, or perhaps they'll try to convince you to find some way that they can slip out from under God's judgment, but you shall not turn to them. For the only way out for them is the path of repentance and faith in the one true God. And as for you, Jeremiah, I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares Yahweh. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. And as for you, my fellow redeemed, you too can return to God's words. For by God's words, you were baptized into his family and adopted as his child. By God's words, you have been exposed as a sinner and driven to repentance. And also by God's words, your sins have been forgiven and you have been set free from the guilt of your sin. By God's words, you have been invited to partake of the body and blood of Jesus, truly present under the bread and wine in our Lord's Supper. And by God's words, you receive that gift given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins and the strengthening of your faith. By God's words, you have been given new life in the Spirit, here and now. And by God's words, you have been promised everlasting life in eternity. Therefore, by God's words, you can be confident that God himself stands with you. Just as Jesus promised, behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Yes, through all your troubles, all your persecutions, all your fears, even amid all your doubts, God still delivers his gifts to you. You have his word on it. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, 
all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.